Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Training Tuesday. You know I love to bring the best people to my people, which is you. Um, so I have got today Lauren Vanessa Zink. She is absolutely amazing copywriting maven, queen of copywriting, I would even say. And today she is going to share with you six copywriting secrets so that you can not only grab people by their eyeballs, but you can grab them by their wallets too. You know, in a very, in, in a way that's in integrity, of course, with, with what you're doing and selling with integrity. But we all know if your copywriting stinks, you're gonna hear crickets when you launch. You're not gonna have customers. And that is really terrible because that means the people who want and need what you are offering will not be served. So without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Lauren introduce herself to um, say a little bit more about what she does, who she serves, and what she's got in store for us today. Thanks, All Christine. Right. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. Uh, I can't see you, but you can see me. I'm so happy to be here and to talk to you guys about copy. This is my zone, my zone of genius. Um, I'll get into like a little bit more of my background here because I have slides. I'm such a nerd for slides and uh, it's actually written out. You can see it and all of that stuff. But what you need to know about me um, is that I am here to serve you. I'm here to teach you guys all about how to stand out online. So I'm sure that so many of you guys feel like, oh my goodness, there's so many people who do what I do. Um, I don't know how to bring my personality yeah, to this. I need uh, a way to... I need a way to stand out against all of these people who I feel like are doing something similar and I need to be remembered and I also need to sell some stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about today uh, in our tiny, happy little presentation training here for you. If you do have questions, Christine is watching the chat yeah. for us now. She's going to pop them up uh, and let me know as they come up. So if you do have them, ask away. I am an open book and um, I'm just here to serve you guys. So. Awesome. All right. So um, you can go ahead and share your screen. We're going to jump right into the content so that you can get the most value. I would highly suggest that you have a pen and paper ready to take notes because Lauren dishes. Um, not only do I just love her in general and know her from Facebook, but I am a client of hers. So I know the awesomeness that she provides and you definitely want to be taking notes. So go ahead and do that. Lauren, you can go ahead and start um, dishing out your content when you're ready. Yeah, I'm going to share the screen here. As I actually have to click the share button before I bring up the presentation. Ah, uh, you know, technical stuff. Right technical now. stuff. It's all the doodads, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys can see my screen, right? And you can hopefully see me yes. and you know, we're in the corner. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to hit the little presenty button. All right, cool. So as you can see from this beautiful pink and black and white screen, we're going to talk about standing out from the crowd using these six copy techniques. I'm your hostess with the most sis, Lauren Venice Zink, here with Christine Parma, um, ready to blow your freaking mind. So thank you so much for inviting me into this space, Christine. Um, I will love you and I'm so happy to be here serving your people. Yeah. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today, right? If you've ever wondered why some people get really, really popular online and other people, maybe you, are left behind, if you've ever felt like you can't crack the code on the right words to say to really grab your audience's attention and actually get them to like pay you for the things that you do, uh, that's what we're going to cover today. So uh, in this training, copy expert and writing teacher, that's me. I know you can see the slide. I'm writing this in third person. I'm speaking this out loud in third person. Um, I'm going to share these six copy techniques you need to know to stand out for the crowd, reach people, and sell more of your stuff online. So if that feels really yummy and feels like what you need to know, like Christine said, grab a notebook and a pen because um, we are rocking and rolling starting now. So who am I and who do I think I am to even teach you this stuff? That's a photo of me a couple different hair shades ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, just really brief background because I know you guys are here for the content, right? That's what we're doing. But sometimes I think that if you really want to absorb the information, you have to know that you're learning from somebody who you trust. So I want to make sure that you guys feel connected to me um, and that you know who I am and I'm not just some stranger on the internet. So a little bit of background. Um, I've been writing copy for six, multiple six and seven figure entrepreneurs for four years, going on five years now. Um, I have New York Times bestsellers as clients. I have start startups as clients. I have um, some really successful coaches and consultants in the online industry. They are my clients. I've been behind the scenes on some huge launches, six, multiple six, um, some almost seven figure launches. And I've seen what it takes to make it happen. I've seen the good stuff, the bad stuff. The, oh my God, I can't believe that happened stuff. Um, and then I'm also on a personal mission, do do less about my clients and more about me, to empower 1 million entrepreneurs to fearlessly share their voices online by 2020. So um, hopefully you will be one of those 1 million people who is inspired to go out into the world and use your bold voice and to share it totally fearlessly after you learn what you get to see today on this webinar. So that's who I am. Which brings us to copy technique number one. Use your voice. So a lot of us who are watching this right now, um, you guys are probably coaches, consultants, service providers. You might have a brick and mortar business. You might have a product-based business. You might have an MLM. Lots of different people who uh, are in this space who are interested in learning copy. but. Basically, if you run a business, um, you have to think about your brand, which is bigger than you, but you might be the face of your brand. So even companies who are huge still have people that uh, basically are the face of the brand, so that they identify with, right? So even if we think about Zappos, we have Tony Shea. If we think about Amazon, we have Jeff Bezos. If we think about Tesla, Elon Musk, Apple had Steve Jobs, right? So even if you're not a coach, consultant, uh, service provider, mm -hmm. you will have a face of your brand or you will have um, a forward facing personality person who people can identify with. And the reason we're talking about this, right, is because boring doesn't sell. Personality sells. So your audience, they really wanna know who you are they are going to remember your stories, your personality, your anecdotes, your likes, your dislikes, your, oh my God, your mannerisms, the shows you watch, all of those things that you bring to the table, uh, way more than they'll remember your product names or the benefits of what you sell. So your brand's voice is the foundation of everything that you offer. It is the uh, core message that's gonna follow you through your website, your sales pages, your emails, your social media posts, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially no. if you're like a coach, right? You're, you're, Especially. and, and if you're an online entrepreneur, unless you're in e commerce, you are your personal brand, pretty much. Yeah. So, so true. And what I see happen a lot of times is people come to the online entrepreneur space from corporate. Many people mm -hmm. do, right? They didn't love sitting at the desk all day, they didn't love being in the cube, yeah. uh, they didn't love the nine to five. But they have been taught. We, I, I came from corporate cuisine. I think you did too. Yeah. Um, that it's it's actually a good thing to be boring. It's a good thing to not have a personality. Like right. Not swearing in your emails. Being really be formal. Safe, right. Be safe. Don't offend anybody because you might lose a sale. And a lot of us bring that over into our businesses when we're online and we're the face of what we're doing. And that's so the opposite of what we need to do. Um, so there's this fear, there's this fear that I can't be myself and I can't say the things I want to say and I can't tell my stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't take a stand for things because I might lose a sale. And what I'm telling you is that if you don't bring your personality to your business, if you don't use your voice, if you don't, uh, Put, let your freak flag fly. Like if you don't put yourself yeah. out there, that's what's going to lose you the sale. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you're, you're just like everybody else, right? You're generic. You're exactly. playing it safe, but you're generic. And I think people fall victim to that thinking. I know I did when I first started my business, I wanted to make sure I was professional. So it was very kind of blah, you know, and I didn't really stand for much. I didn't, I was afraid to show off my personality because, you know, I thought, oh, well, it'll come off as unprofessional. 
yeah, unprofessional. That's the word we use, right? Yeah. Maybe unprofessional. But you won't make any money. You'll have a really hard time making money mm -hmm. if, you, if you let that like rule your school, if you let that be what you believe. So um, I have a couple of examples of people bringing their voices into their business. So the first one you'll see is RuPaul. I love um, it. <laughs> I drag race all the way. If you guys haven't read the RuPaul book, I highly recommend that you read really? it. Really? Oh, you know, I think I had totally forgotten that she had a book. Oh, out. yeah. Like, look, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of like the best self-help, non-self-help, like most inspiring type of things you can read. Oh, okay. I'm gonna put it on my reading list. Definitely. Yeah. And she just got a Hollywood star this week too. So she, she really, like, yes, that's awesome. Stage, not in drag, um, gave this really inspiring speech and you could tell like so moved was crying on stage. Jane Fonda was there. So it's mm. a good, it's like a really heartwarming clip. I think you guys that's awesome. See, but anyway, so RuPaul is known for saying this, if you don't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Right. She yeah. says this at, at like the, at the end of her shows, um, it pretty much if you Google RuPaul, it's like the first thing that comes up. So, um, really taking a stand for this self-love, loving yourself, um, larger than life. You know, you can see the personality, right? You can see the swear word, you can see the theme of self-love. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously the super glam persona, that is such a great example of a branding voice. Um, mm -hmm. and just being completely yourself. Yeah. Marie Forleo too, right? Uh, she signs off every single Marie TV with stay in your game and keep going for your dreams. The world needs that special gift that only you have. And even if you go on her website, um, her homepage image, it, it like writes across the screen, the world needs that special gift that only you have. Mm -hmm. So Marie Forleo has this really approachable, inspiring uh, online brand persona, really relatable voice, right? Like you feel like you could sit on a couch with her and like have a coffee and just laugh and she would be your girlfriend or like your mm -hmm. big sister or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so she's totally different than RuPaul, but she's still bringing her personality to the game. And um, another also, thing that I really- I was gonna say she also brings her personality through the fashion. Yeah. Right? Like, don't you want her hair? Yes. I want her hair and her clothes. Like, I want her hair and her clothes. We could just have some of that Marie Forleo hair. That'd be awesome. I remember she did this one video on haters, having online haters, and she was reading some of her hate mail. And uh, really? one of her, one of her, um, the people had commented and said, you have hair extensions. And she brought her hairstylist on the actual uh, episode and had her hairstylist like run the brush through her hair so that she could Bad. prove that she didn't have hair extensions, which she didn't need to do. But well, I like, who cares if she has hair extensions? Her hair still looks great, you know? And, I mean, and, it's, not, and you know, it's the value that she's bringing that's the bigger picture, but that's part of her branding, right? Yeah. But exactly. she has the styled background, she has the gorgeous hair, she has the fashion, she's in New York City. So funny. it's she part of the fact she's funny. She makes fun of herself. Mm -hmm. It's like how many of us are like insecure about making fun of ourselves, especially on camera in video that's going out for, in her case, to millions of people. Yes. Video lives forever. That's why I have so much makeup on today. Yeah. <laughs> video lives forever. <laughs> oh, and my new favorite earrings, you guys. I just bought these. I'm doing a photo shoot uh, next month. And so I went out and I bought six pairs of earrings as you do. Awesome. Do Why not? Shoot. Yeah. Um, matching my branding colors. So bringing my own voice to what I do, all about the huge earrings and the fearless self-expression. I think there's yeah. one more example. Oh yeah, Steve Jobs. Um, so Steve Jobs fits really perfectly with the think differently. This quote, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown all your own inner voice. So um, when we think of Apple, we think of Steve Jobs. We think of the black turtleneck. We think of him on stage, um, bringing something totally innovative and interesting to computers, phones, watches, iPods. Do you know still exist? iPods, Christine, do you have an iPod? They well, I have one from like long ago. They do still exist. They still sell them. And I'm like, who buys these things? I don't know. Maybe if they don't want to have like a huge phone on their arm when they're at the gym, which that's what put me off of taking my phone to the gym for a long time. Yeah. But yeah, they still sell them and they cost like $300. And I, <laughs> oh my cheap. goodness. Yeah. I remember when you could get a shuffle for like 90 bucks. 
Yeah, totally. Okay. So, um, how do you use this tip, right? Like, so we've talked about this copy technique of using your voice, why it's important examples of people who've done it to give you some inspiration, but like the how to the actual action steps, mm -hmm. which I'm an action step person. So there's yeah. a lot of these. How yeah. 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 I love it. Right. Like it, why not bring it down to earth and make it really tangible. Um, so how do you use your voice? So one thing to consider is having a signature sign off. So Marie does that, uh, stay in your game. The world needs that special thing. She does that at the end of every episode of Marie TV. I used to do in all of my emails, um, go bravely. That was my signature sign off and people really liked it. Somebody messaged me one time to tell me that my email signature had inspired her to buy a beach house. So wow. Was, like, really, I felt really powerful. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the power, right? And then people will remember you for this, right? It becomes like your essence then and they carry it with them throughout their life. So um, consider having a signature sign off in the end of your emails or the end of your videos. Christine, do you have a signature sign off? You know, I always say shine brilliantly, like yeah. in my emails, yeah. because for me, it's about like what I do, the work I do is about helping people to step into their own power to actually like realize that they're powerful and to shine their own unique light. I feel like unless you're standing out like a, you know, a, a beacon for those who need you to find you, it's like, how the hell are they supposed to find you? <laughs> like, don't make it hard. Shine brilliantly in whatever way that is that you're doing so that the people who you're meant to serve can actually find you. Ah, uh, preach, preach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, other ways to use your voice. Maybe you're not sure of your personality or what your strongest personality traits are. Um, so I like to have my clients ask their friends, family, clients, loved ones, how they would describe you. So actually my, um, my signature sign off go bravely came from doing this exercise. Um, I had noticed that a lot of people had written back when I asked this question, they had written back, uh, brave. That was the word that they would describe me as. So it actually became the basis of my brand, my previous evolution of my brand, the name of my Facebook group, uh, which is no longer with us, RIP, but, um, was brave entrepreneurs, right? The signature was go bravely. So that's where that came from was from this question. So and I'm curious. Had you thought of yourself as brave before somebody else or those people told you that? No, I, I, I think I would have described myself as strong or like resilient mm -hmm. or something like that, but I don't think I would have used the word brave. So and I think, I, th I was gonna say, I think this totally ties into the copywriting discussion because mm -hmm. effective copy uses the words that your clients use, right? Yeah. So in, you know, in this case, it's almost like the people you asked, you know, like, how would you describe me? And they came back and said, brave, they see you differently than you see you. And it's the same thing when you're in business for yourself or, you know, putting yourself out there, your, the people around you, your audience, your potential clients often see you differently. And frankly, in a much better way, <laughs> like give you a lot more credit and, you know, find you a lot more inspiring than you may find yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so true. And the brave, I think, was really interesting for people because they felt braver, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it didn't, it wasn't just a descriptive word for me. It was how they wanted to see themselves. Yes. And it's so perfect for this conversation that we're having right now because creating a Facebook Live or writing your sales page or writing your website or sending an email, it takes courage. I mean, it really does. You're putting yourself out there. Yeah. So a brave, that idea of this brave messaging, um, mm -hmm. people could really sink their teeth into that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like going back to your knowing your potential clients the, or their dream clients, like what do they want to step into for themselves? Mm -hmm. What are they dreaming about for themselves? What qualities do they want? When you know those, then you can use them in your copy to create a much deeper connection. Yeah, and embody them and everything yep. that you do, right? I mean, yep. definitely talk about it, but also really stand for it and be that mm -hmm. person, be, be those words. Um, definitely. Yeah. 
So another way to use your voice, um, using the same words, phrases, and images or metaphors throughout your copy and your content. So if you guys know me, uh, I talk about my dog stinks a lot. I talk about living in San Diego. Uh, I use the words empire, tiny happy empire was my company name a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so those are mine. And I wear a lot of red lipstick. And um, I have other clients too, right? Like my, one of my clients, Sabrina, she lives in Bali. Uh, she mm -hmm. travels the world with her boyfriend. So he makes a ton of appearances and the things that she writes about and talks about. Mm -hmm. And um, and traveling. And she also has a signature framework, a signature thing that people remember her for. So that mm -hmm. comes up in all of her copy too. So talking about similar words, similar phrases, and then similar themes too. So I talk about copy content, your voice, and being fearless. Christine, what do you talk about? Shining brightly, being a beacon. Right. right. Yeah. And you know, for me, a lot of it's mindset. Even like more so is mindset, your inner beliefs, um, how they determine, uh, you know, even before the business activities, like how, why mindset is so important because your mindset, your belief sets will determine what you're willing to do or not do, how consistently you show up in your business or not. Because if you're driven, like if you have limiting beliefs around, you know, I, around people judging you or am I adding value or am I, you, know, you have hangups about money, you know, you won't, you'll, that will come across in the things you do and don't do in your business. And then beyond that, it's like, like you said, the framework, like how do you actually serve people? How do you put together a program or a course that walks people step by step through the transformation that they want so they can get the results that they came to get? Yeah. That's a lot of what I talk about. I, I break it, I love breaking stuff down into step by step processes and making making complex things really simple and understandable for people. Me so that too. would be another thing lists and structures. I live yeah. for lists and structures. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably why we play so well. Yes, I think so. One of the reasons. <laughs> Plus you're awesome. I'm awesome. So there you go. That's all true. Yeah. That's yeah. all true. <laughs> for you people who are watching this, take, make a note. Just like Lauren and Christine. Yeah, we're awesome. Yes. And of course, we don't read it. <laughs> Okay, so that's just one copy technique, right? How you can stand out from the crowd. We have five more to get to, so let's do it. Yeah. And I'm curious, Lauren, when you, like in your experience in working with people, how, like what percentage would you say of people when you like review their copy or even when you're, like if they don't have copy and you're starting to work with them, how many start off with safe copy? Safe and boring and bland and that no personality type of, Copy. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> hey, no way. I think I wasn't, I'm going to like call myself as an exception. I don't think it's totally bland the time that we were working together, but definitely. Yeah, definitely. I've learned is you know, like when I read what you write, I'm like, wow, that's like slap across the face kind of attention getter versus me. I'm like, oh, a nice little tap on the shoulder. I hope that's a good thing. It is. It's a bitch slap in a really good way. <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to use that. It gives me for it. It's like a the nicest way possible. Bitch slap. <laughs> I pay attention, right? Pay attention to what I'm saying here. <laughs> but most people, like we talked about, most people are coming from corporate, especially if you're a new coach, yeah. a new service provider or consultant. Like almost everybody that I've seen starts with pretty vanilla copy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also think that there's this part of this where you have to take step-by-step -step action and like dip your toe in the water like maybe mm -hmm. you drop an f-bomb or that's not everybody's style right but just as right. an example um and you see that you don't die and you see that right. it's okay and that people still like your stuff and still comment on your stuff and still engage with you and then you can go like a little bit further i don't know what's further than an f-bomb yeah. Two F bombs. Like right. you, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, step by step and into the water and you test it out and you see that it's okay and you see that it's actually really great for you. Um and that people people remember it. So right. it's okay if you're starting out and you're afraid, but you know, step by step you'll discover that it's actually a really great move for you to put more and more of yourself into your into your copy. And I also believe that copy is an, it's an evolution, right? Like mm -hmm. we're always changing. Your business is always changing. Your brand is always changing. I, this is my third or fourth website, the iteration that I'm working on. And this is my going in my fifth year. Um, 
and I'm still evolving and changing too. And Christine, yeah. I know you have evolved and changed since we started working together and that's normal. And, and a lot of people use that as an excuse to not put stuff out. Like, Oh, I haven't quite nailed it down. And it's like, you right. don't nailing it down is kind of a myth, right? Like you just, totally. you put it out and you watch it evolve as you do. Yeah. I mean, even like Marie Forleo, right. She started off doing exercise videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. before she was like in the, in a bartender and before she was a coach, you know, so it's not, you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to change directions when you're acting from a place of true alignment. Like this is more of the direction I'm going into. And I found out that this wasn't so much my thing. And this is more of where I'm, a, you know, in the direction I'm evolving, which totally goes along and speaks to your second point about right how you speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I blame corporate on this too. I corporate, I give corporate a bad rap. It's not actually that bad, right? If you want a steady life, but um, it's a similar thing. We, it, when we're writing emails in corporate, it's, they always sound so formal, right? Like, mm -hmm. dear John, my sincerest apologies for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, that's not how, I, that's not how you speak. And people, you'll just lose people so fast. Mm -hmm internet and, and whatever you're putting out there. Um, if you are sounding super formal and academic, so you're writing for the internet. It's not the same as writing for corporate. It's not the same as writing for academia. Um, it'll be like the sweet kiss of death. If you do it on the internet, yeah. people have really short attention spans. Most of them are reading you on mobile. So each, like each little bit is of copy. It, it seems bigger than it actually if you have, what I'm trying to say is if you have long blocks of text, nobody's going to be able to read that on copy. It's a struggle to read it on your laptop, but most people are on their phones and it's just like scroll on forever and you're going to lose them. So, um, good point. Yeah. So the easiest way for you to overcome those barriers is to write like you speak. So, um, it doesn't have to be this whole formal thing, academic thing. They really want to connect with you, right? Your humanness is what's sexy. Your humanness is where you create the connection. People are emotional creatures. They buy for emotional region, uh, reasons. And formal writing is not emotional. It's, it's head space instead of heart space. So you're just going to miss all sorts of sales and connection opportunities and, and to be able to build your tribe if you're writing from here instead of here. Well, and I've personally found like when I made that switch to writing like I speak, it's so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, it's like if you get out of your head and you just speak, I mean, obviously you want to speak with intention, but you want to, re you know, proofread what you wrote, but it's so much easier if you just speak colloquially. There's a, a no, maybe not a right like I normally speak word, unless you're my husband, he likes old words that nobody uses like here here to for with you know whatever <laughs> I'm like nobody he's like does anybody say this I'm like no I mean nobody says that anymore just don't <laughs> don't do that but it's so much easier and it's fun and then it's like you're talking with your best friends and that's what it feels like when somebody reads what you wrote yeah it's so true and they're probably at some point especially if you're doing coaching consulting training anything like that going to connect with you whether that's a discovery call whether that's watching your facebook live whether that's buying your thing and watching how you train and these will be opportunities when you speak anyway so you want your brand voice you want your messaging and your copy to match what is going to come out of your freaking mouth right. when they have the opportunity to actually hear you yeah yeah, yeah. so example um because i'm an example nerd frank kern he's a direct response copywriting uh person copywriter this is his website it actually on his about stage it says anyway what do you want to know like can you imagine would any of us have thought to sit down you? and you like, anyway hey what are you writing about me <laughs> but we would say that in a conversation wouldn't we anyway yeah. like when we want to get back on we would totally say that um I'm guessing that's not the kind of stuff you're looking for. You're probably wondering, is this guy worth my time and attention, right? That's so conversational. That really mm -hmm. sounds like you're having a conversation with this person, not you're reading a formal, a formal, like Frank Kern is, he's the bee's knees. He's the cat's pajamas when it comes to um, copy. Christine, have you ever bought a Frank Kern program? I'm trying to think. I've never bought one of his programs. I know I've like maybe downloaded like a, you know, some kind of ebook or something from yeah. him. 
Yeah, and I've watched some of his of his stuff and brilliant. He's been around, so he's been around forever. He's been at the top of the direct response marketing, you know, copywriting uh, industry for I don't know as long as I can remember. I remember hearing about Frank Kern probably twenty years ago. Yeah, and, and actually on his about page before the screenshot above it, it actually says Frank Kern is the most sought after direct response copywriter in the world. And you're like, and I'm number two. And I'm, I'm number one. I'm on silver. So that's pretty good. Second is pretty good. Hey, it's not bad to be second to Frank Kern, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, but you guys can see how conversational this is, right? This is not formal. And it would be really easy for him to have written the like, I have one, uh, you know, I'm uh, in the third person formal bio type mm -hmm. of a thing. And it's not like that at all. It's like you're having a conversation with this human being and we're all human beings. So if Frank um, does it, you can do it, right? I mean, if you're saying it's okay to exactly. be like, say, what do you want to know about me? You can, you have permission <laughs> to do that too. Yeah, that's how I live my life. If Frank Kern does it, it must be fine for me to also mm -hmm. <laughs> do it. Um, so the second sample is Derek Halpern. He's a company called Social Triggers. Maybe you guys have heard of it. This is his opt-in on his homepage. Get with the free program, will ya? That is so conversational. It's not at all formal academic or anything like that. Can you imagine like working for your corporate job and if you pitched them mm -hmm. that this is what their opt-in was going to be on, if they even knew what that was, but it, it, right. this was going to go in their homepage, how everybody would be like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? We can't, we might offend somebody. Um, but here in, in this world that we live in, mm -hmm. it's the way to do it. It's the way to go. Mm. Mm -hmm. I really recommend Derek Halpern too, if you guys don't follow. Mm -hmm. um, and then another sample for you guys, James Wedmore. I help online experts scale their businesses and become more profitable. Let me show you how. So if you're watching this and you're having a hard time um, with your elevator pitch or explaining what you do to people, this is like an easy path for you to follow, right? I help blank and then results of that. So you can just borrow yeah. this little James Wedmore thing, but super conversational, right? I help online experts scale their businesses and become more profitable. Bam. So clear, so clear, so concise, um, so digestible. And it's exactly how it would come out of his mouth. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I actually listened to James Wedmore's podcast, Mind Your Business podcast. I think it's probably the top one I listened to. Yeah. And it is all about personality and like him embracing, it's him embracing the woo side, the woo-woo side, the spiritual side of himself and putting it out there on public display, you know, mm -hmm. and just like he, you know, he helps uh, people build their businesses just like I do. And he, but he's one of those people who's not like, okay, business and spirituality are exclusive. And I love that he's a role model for that in a very public way. And he's yeah. extremely popular for it because of it. He has the best podcast that I've ever heard. I just saw mm -hmm. him release one last week that was like, how to raise your vibration. Like, yeah. Here, exactly what you're talking about. Here he is putting it all in display, how to raise your vibration, right? Mm -hmm. So many of us would keep that separate or we'd be tempted to keep that separate from what we do. But yeah. he just, he's rocking and rolling with it. And I love that very permission giving. Okay. So how, how do you do it? How do you write like you speak? So use short, concise sentences, mm -hmm. recording your thoughts, um, and transcribing them as your copy. So this is really good if you want to do blog posts or social media or anything like that. But, um, I use my iPhone and I just record a memo, like a voice memo, and then I'll listen to it back and I'll type out what I say. That's awesome. It's a great way you can do it. I actually yeah. have my, um, I have a, a VA that when I do a Facebook live, I send him over the video. He transcribes it. He actually creates a blog draft out of the transcript because it's my words, right? Yeah. And then I go, you know, I go back and approve it and, you know, make some tweaks and that sort of thing. But man, is that so much easier? And then it's my words, right? Because I'm talking on the Facebook live. I'm not all, you know, formal in my head trying to write out some you know, perfect blog post. And there it is, you know, and it's, I think it, it works really well. And in the process, as far as systems goes, is really awesome for saving time and leveraging your time. 
Totally. And think about how many mic drop moments you have when you're doing a Facebook live. Right. Like even if we went back and listened to this, I'm sure there's like, you know, I'm sure there's just been a million. There's like a million <laughs> golden <laughs> nuggets. It's just like golden nuggets are raining down around you, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, me too. Definitely me too. <laughs> but really, I mean, I even do that with my retainer clients. Well, rather if I'm doing a blog post for them, it will have a conversation and they'll be like, tell me, you know, what you want to, you want people to know about this. And then I will write the blog post from that recorded conversation. And it's so much mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. Um, you can also read your copy out loud before you publish it and see what's awkward and see where the sentences are crazy long and see where you get tripped up and where, like you have a hard time getting the words out of your mouth. Right. Um, those are great opportunities for you to go back. And I literally, if I'm, if I'm reviewing somebody's sales page, uh, and we come across one of these <laughs> sentences, I'll be like, what are you trying to say? And then they'll say it and I'll be like, so say that, like, that's what you need to say. Um. And there, it always a light bulb goes off and it's like, oh, okay. Um, and then using active language instead of passive language, we're not going to do a whole grammar thing here, but like an example is she led the group versus the group was led by her. So um, yeah. it's a writing thing. We don't do it when we speak generally, but we do it when we write um, using this passive instead of active. So sw uh, swap it, use, use the action verb. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything to add about writing like you speak, Christine? Um, yeah, no, I think you covered it really well. I want to uh, give everybody a reminder. If you have a specific question or comment as we're going through this training, then definitely drop it in the comment box. If you're liking it, drop some hearts and likes also so that we know that, you know, we we're hitting the nail on the head with as far as providing you with awesome copywriting uh, tips and techniques. And I, I mean, they are awesome. This is what Lauren does and what she uses to write copy for a whole bunch of clients and clients who have been extraordinarily successful with their businesses and with their launches. So this may seem like some of this may seem simple or obvious, or you may say, Oh, well, I know that. And you know, that phrase, I know that is like one of the most dangerous phrases because there's a huge difference between knowing something and then actually doing it. So like I challenge you after this training, after you've taken your notes and you've, you know, the training's finished, go back and look at some of your copy. And you and run it against the screen of these uh, tips that Lauren is giving you, and look at your copy and say, "Okay, am I writing like I'm speaking? You know, am I really too formal? Is my personality in here? Am I standing out, or am I just kind of blending in with everybody else?" Yeah, so true. All right, copy tip three. We're halfway done, guys. Um, copy your clients. Plagiarism. Yes. Plagiar yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Um, so your clients are basically deciding a lot of the words that you're going to use in your copy. They're telling you all the time what they need. Um, they're your biggest resource, your clients, your audience. You just have to listen to them. You just have to tune in. So they're telling you 24 um, seven. They're the way they describe their problem, what they're asking you for, the questions they're asking on your Facebook lives, the emails they're sending you, what they're posting on their social media. These are all them asking for help, um, telling you what they're struggling with. And it's such a great opportunity for you to mine this stuff and, and look and see what words they're using. Because so often the way we would describe a problem is different than the way that a client would describe a problem. And we have to meet them where they are, not where we are, right? So if we're having a, a conversation about copywriting, I might know that you need to, <clears throat> I don't know, um, deal with your unresolved childhood trauma around something <laughs> that is keeping okay. you from writing your freaking blog post. But you don't know that. You just know that it, whenever it comes around time to do your blog post, you get writer's block um, or, you or something like that. Like right. you just can't get it out. So I can't, I can't lead with your unresolved trauma because you don't even know that that's what's happening. I have to lead with um, what you're telling me you need, which is you're mm. having trouble to write your blog post. Yeah. And or like what they want. I and mean, when I was working with Harvecker, his, the name of his introductory event was called um, Millionaire Mind Intensive. And that title alone, you talk about juicy titles, mm. grabs people's attention because they're like, I want to be a millionaire. I want to have a million dollars. I want to be able to think like a millionaire so I can have a million dollars. And that title was meeting people where they 
wanted, what they wanted, which was, is the money, the big motivator. Money is a huge motivator for people. Yeah. Got them in the door where the transformation could occur. So this isn't about you being deceptive or, you know, deceitful and tricking people and, you know, cha- you know, bait and switch. It's about meeting people where they are so that they can get in the door and get the help they need to make the transformation that you as the expert know needs to happen, you know, to follow that step-by-step path of transformation so they can get the ultimate outcome that they want, but it takes you knowing, right, what they're struggling with and what, what they actually want so that yeah. you can meet them where they are. Yeah, you can't, you can't transform their life or change their life if they're not, like, investing in you. Right. Samples. So um, the skim, I don't know if you guys read the skim, but it, it's like a daily digest of news, and they do voice, they do brand voice so well. Marie Forleo just did a whole podcast on this. Um, but you can clearly see how they're like using the words that their clients would use. So in this email sample, it's right, the story, give me the numbers, what else should I know? That's mm-hmm. exactly what a client would say. Um, what else mm-hmm. should I know? G- give me the number. You know, like it would be so easy for them to be super formal here or for them to like just write out the description of what happened without taking into account what you want to know from them or what you want to get out of this experience. Right. Interesting. Um, Another way to copy your clients is to literally use their voice. So Mm -hmm. this is a testimonial from one of my clients um, on her website. This is on her website, Sherelle, Mm -hmm. um, from one of her clients, Jillian. And so rather than like writing from Jillian's perspective, she's just taken Jillian's words and put them on her website. So Mm -hmm. um, that's another way to do this. Use this tool to copy your clients is to just let your clients speak the way that they would speak, like literally quoting them. Um, And then this is another client of mine, um, Yasmin, for her live event. Uh, She was noticing that people were saying they were talking about the hustle a lot. Um, they were talking about being lonely a lot, being isolated a lot in her, in the discovery call she was having or in their social media posts. So we actually took that copy and we put it in her sales page. So how do you do this? How do you copy your clients? So I want you guys to really think about being a social spy. So listening very, very closely on your discovery calls, reading your email replies, um, looking at comments on social media, looking at what they're saying back on your Facebook lives, looking at what they're saying back on your Instagram posts, all of that good stuff. You can even look at your competitors if you want to. So if they're not engaging with your copy and you can't figure out why, see what your competitors are doing or see what they're telling your competitors. Um, Because at least that gives you some data points, right? At least that gives you an understanding of what your people are looking for. And then never deliver it the way that your competitors would deliver it. Never copy your competitor's voice or anything like that. Um, But it, those people who are coming to your competitor are trying to solve the problem that you solve. So it's a great opportunity for you to see, oh my God, how are they describing the problem? What are they really saying that they need? So this is great too, if you're just starting out and you haven't had clients yet, it gives you like a jumping off point. Mm-hmm. Um, you're looking for repeated phrases. You're looking for the way they describe their problem, um, how they're asking for something that might be totally different than what you know that they need. And Also, if you are a coach or consultant and you ever were your ideal client, so a past version of you um, is struggling with the problem that you solve, you can just remember your own story and what you were going through too. Mm -hmm. And then creating a swipe file. So putting all of those things that you've learned, all of those juicy bits that you've heard your clients say, putting them like in a Google Doc somewhere and then actually, or an Excel spreadsheet and using that when you're writing your copy. Yeah. Christine, anything to add? Yeah, no, I really like that swipe file idea. And it's something that I actually haven't done that I'm going to do now (laughs) to actually have like one dedicated document that has specific words and phrases that I know my dream clients use. You could even, I guess, put in there like a summary of the main problems that they struggle with and like how you solve them and the results that people get or the dream solution that people want. So that would make anytime you're writing copy whether it's for a blog post or a Facebook post or a sales page, so much easier to just have that one document. Why didn't I think of this before? (laughs) I was just going to say, it's so funny. 
Yeah. Most of us don't ask ourselves these questions. Like we don't, like right. I'll send on a clarity workbook whenever somebody is hiring me for writing copy where I'm asking right. them like literally those questions, right? Like, who are you? How do you help people? What are they, like, what do they want from you? And people will be like, huh, how come I never asked myself those questions? It's like, mm -hmm. they're really important foundational questions yeah. um, to, to ask yourself. All right, halfway done guys. So um, point number four, copy techniques to help you stand out online is touching on their pain. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about this a couple of times um, in this webinar and training, but if people aren't reminded why they need you, they won't want to hire you, right? Like they won't have the sense of urgency to hire you. Um, they won't have a reason to jump in and like hand, like sign up to work with you, mm -hmm. invest, grab their credit card, all of that stuff. They won't, they won't do it because they aren't feeling the emotion that they need to do it. It's like in that moment, they're not going into the pain so they can pretend like the pain isn't happening. Yeah. And I think some people kind of avoid this because yes. they, from the standpoint of, well, I don't want to make people feel bad, mm. but people are already struggling in the problem. And so a lot of times they'll like try and ignore the problem because they don't maybe want to deal with the pain, but it's not about making people feel bad. It's about you showing that you get them, that you understand what they're struggling with. And when they read that, they're like, oh, you know, how did, how is she in my head? How is she, is she a mind reader? How does she know what I'm struggling with? Then you're going to establish that deeper connection so that then they'll keep reading, number one, and number two, be more likely to take that next step with you. You know, if they, if they can, you know, what else you say on, say, your sales page continues to resonate with what they desire. Yeah. Another thing to remember is they're feeling the pain either way. Like whether you yeah. bring it up, they're feeling it. And if you don't give them an opportunity to transform that pain or to work through that pain or to get to the other side, they're going to feel that pain a lot longer than if they were to invest in your thing, which can shorten that pain timeline. So it's a yeah. disservice to them to let them be in that pain for longer, even though it might feel uncomfortable to mention the pain or to talk about that pain. Right. Um, because you are actually there to, to shorten, to shorten that experience for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give them the shortcut, right? Yeah. You've been a lot of, a lot of times, you know, online entrepreneurs, we're coming from the place of helping people with something we've been through ourselves. We've been through it. We've gotten to the other side. Now we want to make it easier for the people that, we're, that we help. So you want to make it really clear to people that you've been there, you've done that, you understand the pain, you get them, and you can help them take the shortcut, the easier route. Yeah, so, so true. And, um, and they need to buy in, right? Like they, mm -hmm. they, need, they need to be bought into the solution themselves. So this is a reason that oftentimes people don't get a lot of results from doing something free um, or don't show up for the free thing or don't do the work from the free thing is because they need to be bought into. So if financially they need to be bought in and emotionally they need to be bought in. So if you are talking to them about their pain, that gives them the opportunity to buy in emotionally, which is something they need if they actually want to see results. Yeah. And actually I want to give you a, a share a tip that I used recently when I um, spoke at uh, live at an event here. Uh, I had a handout form at the end for people to sign up to get a free coaching call with me. It was something I arranged special with the, the person who was putting on the event that invited me to speak there. And one of the things I wrote on the form, because you know, I think a, a, the reason that a lot of people don't do free calls or don't do free discovery calls, and I know it's what held me back from doing them for a long time, was you're afraid you're gonna get a bunch of tire kickers, it's gonna be a waste of your time, people aren't gonna show up, you know, all of those fears, and so you don't do them. So one of the things I put on the handout so that people would show up is, oh, no, let me see if I actually have the handout right here, because I wanna give you the exact phrase. This is like super sales sneaky tech, not even sneaky, but I put in um, qualifiers. So if they wanted to have the coaching session, I put three boxes um, and one of them was the last box I had them check and I had to check all the boxes in order to qualify for the free call. 
was mm -hmm. I value my time and others' time, and I fully commit to showing up for my Manifest Miracles session when scheduled. Because what that does is that puts people on the spot, like when they, they're making a commitment. So if they don't stick to that commitment, if they don't show up for the free call, now they have violated their integrity. Because most people have um, the, the sense of, you know, I, I want to show up fully. I respect other people's time. I hate when people waste my time. And so by asking them to commit to that, I have essentially called them out on their integrity. So if they choose to not show up, they're very aware that they have violated essentially a promise to me and their own integrity. And I will tell you out of like over 25 calls that I did, I had one no show. That's awesome. I mean, like, I'm like, wow, that worked so well. And it was the first time I'd ever tried it. It was something I thought of. And I'm like, I'm going to be doing that from now on. I'm going to do that from now on too. That's yeah. going on my application form when you sign up to do a discovery call with me. Yeah. I really like that. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah. Samples, samples of sharing people's pain, right? Um, so this is from one of my clients, Maru's infinite receiving sales page, um, which has grown her business to be a million dollar business, by the way. So mad props on this one. Um, but here's how she's touching on the pain. So you only get with the capacity, you only get what you have the capacity to receive. We grew up being told that if you want more than what you have, that makes you ungrateful. If you ask for what you want, that makes you selfish. If you're too confident, people won't like you. And if you have more than other people, you should feel guilty. Um, so her program is helping you expand your ability to receive things. Um, but in order to do that, she needs to remind you that your ability to receive things is small right now. And one of the reasons that it's small is because of all of these things that we grew up hearing and other people um, tell us about ourselves. So this is how we brought those pain points into the sales page. Denise Stuffield Thomas, um, another one of my mentors, free, free workshop, The Truth About Your Money Blocks. These seven money blocks will keep you undercharging, over delivering, and from earning what you're worth. Click here for instant access. So she is talking about the pain points directly here. If you yeah. have these, you'll be undercharging, over delivering, and you won't earn what you, work, what you are worth. Um, and then just another example uh, from one of my clients, Sabrina Phillips, this is her mastermind sales page, um, which was a half a million dollar launch for her, which is amazing. Wow. Um, we talked about her clients were teetering on the edge of success, taking so much work to get there, sacrificing themselves, wanting more, but being afraid um, of if they stop what they're doing, everything that they've worked so hard to achieve will crumble, checking mm -hmm. messages on their phone, rushing. Um, you guys get the point, right? So really meeting them where they are right now and meeting that, uh, them in that pain um, and giving them the opportunity to transform that pain into something better. Yeah. So one thing that I like to um, run my clients through, Christine, you've been in like all of my programs. So we've probably done this exercise like 40 <laughs> times by now. Always good reminder, refresher. <laughs> but it's the day, I call it the day in the life exercise. So from the moment your ideal client is waking up in the morning until the moment your ideal client is going to bed at night, how is this problem that you solve showing up in their life? So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, vulnerability moment. I'm working with a love coach right now because I'm ready to like meet my forever man. All right. So, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Um, so how, why I hired her, right? How that looks in my life. First of all, waking up in bed, like in a king size bed with just me and my dog. So like from the moment I wake up, right? Like there's that, there's the opportunity for somebody else to be in that space and there's not. Um, or, you know, like wishing you could roll over and get a good morning kiss or something like mm -hmm. that. And so expanding on that all day, what that actually looks like um, in your client's day, how that's showing up, these by taking it down to that um, almost minute by minute level, mm -hmm. it's going to remind them of how many times in a day this problem is actually showing up and how much pain they're actually in because they haven't solved this problem. So it might be easy for them to avoid it. It might be easy for them to hop on Netflix and forget that they're lonely, right? It might be mm -hmm. easy for them to do all of these other things or bury themselves in their work or whatever else I do to forget that yeah. I'm like single, right? Or whatever it is, whatever this problem that you're solving is. Um, 
humans don't want to be in pain. So we try to avoid our pain. So um, actually reminding them of all of the opportunities in a day where they have, where they're experiencing this really meets them where they are. And it reminds them that they do want a different outcome. They do want to see something different. And if they don't, this is what happens to them every day. Every day they don't make a decision to work with you. They will feel the same pain over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is how you start your copy. This is how you start your programs, your sales pages, your emails, all of that stuff. So you want to start with the pain they're in. Um, and then be really specific. So losing five pounds of belly fat is much more specific than losing weight. So that's just something to remind you guys when you're, when you're talking about their pain, um, not being general, but being really, really specific. Yeah. Or fitting back into your genes after you've had a baby. Yes. Exactly. Like that would be specific, you know, and that's like how many moms feel that and want that. I mean, I know I did. I'm like, oh, if I can, when I'm just so looking forward to not wearing like the maternity clothes anymore. I can't wait to fit back into my old clothes and feel like me again, right? So all of those phrases, that's what you want to use. Yeah. Okay. Two more guys. Two more copy techniques. Pleasure. One of my, my big words for this year, pleasure. Like your desire words, like your theme Yeah, words. having more of it, allowing myself to have more pleasure. And not just in the, you know, kinky, kinky way sort of <laughs> thing, but more pleasure from the standpoint of just enjoying life, you know, of not rushing through life and like missing out on all the good stuff that's already all around me. Actually enjoying everything in a, in a lot bigger way than I've allowed myself to do in the past including enjoying the, my work with my clients, feeling lighter about it, right? Talking like I speak, you know, all of that plays into it. Yeah. Simplifying the process, right? Making mm -hmm. it less hard. Yes, definitely. So why does somebody really hire you or give their money to you? Um, it's not because of what you're selling. It's because of what your product program or service does for them. It's because of how it changes their life. So on a foundational level, every program, every product, every service solves a problem. So ask yourself, what problem are you really solving with your coaching, your consulting? Christine, what problem are you really solving? Um, well, one of the big problems that I solve is exactly what you said about simplifying. You know, yeah. People, so many online entrepreneurs feel overwhelmed by what they feel like they have to do in order to be successful in business. And when you really look at what it truly takes, it's like you could cut out 80% of what you're doing and not be running around trying the 25 different techniques and trying to serve 25 different dream clients. So about simplifying your business and also so you can have the time for yourself and your family and all those other things that are really important to you so yeah. that you can have a successful business and a joyful life at the same time. Yeah. So what I want to point out is that it's okay to solve more than one problem with mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. So I solve more than That's one right. problem, right? Um, I mm -hmm. give people confidence to sell their stuff. That's one thing copy helps them do. Um, I help them sell their stuff. Right? Yeah. That's another thing exactly. copy helps them. And then also there's an element of freeing up your time and staying in your zone of genius when you hire mm -hmm. a copywriter too. You don't have to slave over this thing for hours. You can be out coaching your clients. So mm -hmm. um, make sure that you are asking yourself, what problem are you really, really solving? And um, a thing to remember is you're solving who they're going to be, what they'll be able to do and what they'll be able to have once they buy from you. So Christine helps people have like a more joyful life, right? That's and a business. So that's what they'll be able to have once they buy from you. Um, so be, do, and have. Those are that's a phrase that you hear a lot in the mindset space. Um, but it's a great opportunity to ask yourself that question if you want to make more sales too. What are you allowing people to do, be, and have as a result of working? with you. And then we talked about this a little bit earlier, but three no fail reasons people buy, right? Because you help them get laid because you help them get paid and because you allow them to live forever. So if you can bring the things you do back to those three core points or one of those three point core points, that's, you're going to be so solid. Sex, money, and Im immortality. Aging, I guess <laughs> living forever. 
<laughs> Le- like legacy. You May know? create like, your I'm legacy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like I'm I'm getting close to 45, so the aging thing's kind of on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. Uh, we've got your butt in inbox covered. So that's what they're helping you with. They're you know, literally covering your butt with their products. Um, that's the pleasure. Win 800 flowers, sending smiles. It, they could just, they could like literally be like flowers, right? <laughs> like they could, right. Like, I, you, you want to buy flowers. We sell flowers, buy them. But they don't. Um, they think about the reason that people buy flowers. Mm. The reason people buy flowers is because when the person receives it, they feel so incredible about themselves and they're smiling and their whole day is like just, they're lit up from the inside out because they have these flowers. So that's what I want you guys to look for when you talk about what you're selling. You're not just selling flowers. You're selling the result of those flowers. Right. And the person um, who sends the flowers gets to feel amazing too for having helped that you know the receiver actually have a better day and smile and bring them joy it's like how good do you feel when you give a gift that somebody loves you know it's exactly so they get to make the you know both parties feel good yeah exactly and they know that so that's why their 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 banner their homepage banner right now it just really works um and this is an example from one of my other clients christina john valley so this is on her coaching page um, the benefits of working with her. We talked about giving your boss the pink slip, uh, making the leap off the corporate ladder, growing your income, um, getting recognition, all of that stuff. So more examples for you guys, but how do you actually do this? How do you actually sell your pleasure? So we do the day in the life exercise part two, which is from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep after they bought your thing, what does their day look like? So after I meet my forever man, I wake up in the morning and I am immediately met with like a million kisses all over my face from my dream person. And with, with really fresh breath, right? Not the morning <laughs> breath. <laughs> he magically has minty fresh breath in the morning. Yes. And he's, he's brought like bacon and eggs to the <laughs> Even better, right? Yeah, exactly. He's been cooking bacon and eggs for you. Exactly. (laughs) So again, it's the same exercise, but just from a different perspective, how have you changed their life after they work with you? Um, And what are they able to be, do, and have because you helped them? So you're speaking to the benefits, not the features. So the benefit, uh, let's say you're using, you're selling a coaching program, right? So you might say, I have you buy four 45 minute calls with me in a month or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's a feature. The benefit is um, the next level income you're going to get, or this like crazy amount of support that's going to help you sell more packages or whatever it is. So mm-hmm. that's what you're looking for. The benefit, not the feature. Yeah. So you're really spending um, most of your sales copy talking about the pleasure and painting the story of this transformation, painting the story of the life after they hire you or buy your thing. Christine, anything to add about the pleasure? Um, Yeah, I really, I would say, you know, first of all, you need to know what people want, what their desires are, what's the, Mm -hmm. the ultimate outcome, including the, including the practical things, but also the pleasure part and put that in your offer and don't be afraid to like go big with it. You know, a lot of people, they have these like secret dreams and secret desires. And if you get to know your dream clients well enough, you'll be clued into that. It may be what you're secretly dreaming of or what you were secretly dreaming of when you were struggling with the problem yourself, put Mm -hmm. that in your copy. Because again, it's going to be one of those moments where they go, well, how does she know? How is she reading my mind like this? Oh my gosh, she really, she really understands me. So true. We're on the final copy tip. The final copy tip to help you guys stand out online. Ooh, we've been going for a while. Holy yeah. cow. Look at us. All right, perfect. Well, we're almost done. Um, but I'm sure we could talk about this forever. <laughs> <laughs> so the final copy tip that I want to leave you guys with is to be a disruptor. I went to this amazing TEDx talk here in San Diego um, a couple of weeks ago, and the theme was all about challenging the status quo and being a disruptor. And I just got got to thinking about it, and I was like, oh my God, that's a marketing message that we all need to hear. If you have an online brand, I'm going to drop some numbers here for you guys. 
the average person is served 1,700 Google banner ads per month. There wow. are 236.5 billion emails sent and received around the world every day. Organic reach for your business Facebook page is at 2%. Um, one, one resource I saw said 2.6, but huge difference, right? Two yeah. Seconds. Stinks either way, right? <laughs> yeah, not, not, a, not a great number. <laughs> uh, Facebook made a $9.16 billion in ad revenue in the second quarter of 2017. So that's one quarter out of last year. I am so kicking myself for not buying the stock when it was in IPO. <laughs> in financial services and had that opportunity. Lord knows oh, I man. probably have sold it early, you know, too early though. Yeah, I hear you. But that's so much noise, right? There's yeah. so much yeah. marketing noise online. There's so much content, copy, ads, and you're fighting against to be heard. So if for every, every single thing we've talked about so far, including using your voice, like that you've got to employ it if you want to stand out. You can't, you can't be normal. You can't be average. You can't say the things that everybody else is saying and stand for the things that everybody else is standing for and like exist in the same way that other people do. Or you'll be, it'll be so hard for people to even see you and to listen to you and to stop right. and pay attention to you at all. So, so, so what are some ways that like people can be a disruptor with their copy? Oh my God, I have so, so first I want to show you six examples. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> and then I have, oh my God, and he's trying to kill me. Oh no. <laughs> specifically about how to do this. I'm so glad you asked. Um, so I saw, so if you guys don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, um, he is, he's wildly popular. Like he's got one of the biggest followings online for an entrepreneur that I've ever seen. Um, and his thing is all about the hustle, like hustle. There's one, there's one uh, in his book, this, he's quoting it actually here in this. It, it's like you go to work from nine to five and then you come home and you hang out your family from five to eight and then from eight to three in the morning you work on your business. And that's his, that's his like what mm -hmm. he preaches that you can have whatever you want as long as you're willing to work your balls off for it <laughs> until the middle of the mm -hmm. night and only sleep for two hours. And so this, um, this post went viral the other day in this past week. Um, from John Westenberg is this person who wrote it. And it opens with Gary Vaynerchuk is trying to kill you. So really grabs your attention. Um, mm -hmm. Speaks to this idea, flips this idea that you should work and hustle all the time, like on its head, right? So mm -hmm. taking this already really popular thing and flipping it on its head, which we'll talk about um, in a minute. Oh, sorry. There's a swear word in here. I swear a lot, but you guys might not swear a lot. I'm just noticing it's in here. So I think people can handle it. Okay, good. <laughs> And this is Camera Luna. So uh, this is her homepage, actually. You'll see this buckle up Freedom Hacker. You'll see that it's drawn, which is not a thing you see a lot on websites. Um, you'll see that she's in a spaceship, which is not a thing you see a lot on websites. Mm -hmm. You'll see that she's called them a name. So she's named her tribe, um, Freedom Hacker, right? So that gives, that's a way to disrupt the system, right? It's hacking is in itself a word that basically means to disrupt the system. Right. Um, so not only is she a disruptor with what she stands for, how her, how her hair is, right. her views, like she's, um, uh, and obviously she's brilliant. Right. But I, I remember seeing, uh, she changed her hair color. She changes her hair color all the time, but she changed it from blue to like gray or blue to purple or something like that. Mm -hmm. This was last year. And one of the first comments on it was like, I started following you because you had blue hair. <laughs> just remember the blue hair right. um, so that is disrupting but she also gathers a tribe of people who are disruptive too that's part of her marketing mm -hmm. so um this is my client louisa joe so the way that she disrupts is she asks you if you're ready to go from employee to entrepreneur so we're uh, born in this, we were born in this environment where it's expected that you'll go to college and then do the nine to five thing and you climb the corporate ladder and you'll retire at 65 and then you'll live your life. And so she's challenging that idea with the idea that you can go from employee to entrepreneur. You can be the boss of your own life. And then um, d here's the Dove campaign. So uh, their campaign for real beauty. So you're presented um, with, I mean, like at every magazine and TV show and all of that, you're just presented all this time with, with like sick figure women as not that there's anything wrong with being thin, but like 
slender women as the beauty standard. And so mm. Dove um, disrupted that idea by showing real women. So women of all shapes and sizes and colors mm. and heights and everything um, across their, across their ads, across their campaigns. So. And unphotoshopped, I think too. Yeah, I think you're right. Unphotoshopped. Yeah. yeah. There was a whole um, article I read fairly recently about Victoria's Secret and how they campaign and they present themselves and all the, you know, super like size two models and super provocative poses versus, was it American Apparel? There was another brand that I hadn't really um, paid attention to, but they essentially did the, the real body campaign and it was looking at the growth of the company. So about knowing your clients and this, you know, real women company that was about women's empowerment and everything was having phenomenal growth and Victoria's Secret was actually um, having negative growth. Yeah. They're, because they're moms forward, were, yeah. you know, going into the stores and they're like, I'm not taking my teenage daughter to a store that has like pornographic photos. Like, mm -hmm. is this even for women? No, obviously it's not the way that these models are posed and that sort of thing. It's a really interesting conversation, but so spot on about Victoria's Secret and like, the way that the other thing I think to pay attention to is like how things are trending. So like maybe it worked and it did work for Victoria's Secret for a long time to use those kind of models and that kind of messaging. But now it's not because women's issues and the whole Me Too campaign and everything else is so up in the collective consciousness that there's a backlash against that kind of marketing. So it's also being aware of like where the collective consciousness is going and also specifically for your client base. Yeah, that's a really good point. Victoria's Secret, they did their fashion show last year in, um, in China. And one of the reasons they did it in China is because that's one of the biggest lingerie markets in the world, mm -hmm. um, which tells me that they need to be entering into different market spaces because they're having a harder time mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So that was one thing that I observed from watching. I love the Victoria's Secret fashion show. I think, Christine, I think you saw that I did a presentation on yeah. like how they market. Yeah. Yeah. So send me that article. I want to read it. I want to read it. Yeah, I'll try and find it. I had, I had a post up about it. Yeah, I want to see it. And then I'm um, Old Spice, right? So Old Spice has this great campaign. Uh, that's just bizarre. Like there's no other way it to is, describe it. It's hysterical. It. It's so yeah, funny. It's, <laughs> It's so funny. It's so weird. And yeah. it, they say really obvious things and they do things that are surprising. And, and I'm on a horse. You guys probably remember this one. And it's to grab your attention, right? Like all of these crazy things happen that you're just like not expecting to happen. Yeah. And it keeps you watching. It keeps you pulled through the whole commercial and then through the next commercial and the next commercial, right? Like every time you see an old space commercial, like you kind of stop and you pay attention. Um, right. Because you want to see what's going to happen. You want to see what's like going to happen. Like what weirdness play. they've put into that commercial. Yes, exactly. And then you want to show it to your friends and all of that stuff. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So how, how do you do this? How do you actually become a disruptor? So one way is to take a common belief, phrase, or idea and to flip it on its head. So do the opposite of what everybody um, says you should do. So you've heard like proverbs or maybe proverb isn't the right word, but like housewife advice mm -hmm. or... What is that? Mm -hmm. Wife sales? Something like wife sales. Yeah. Um, old wife sales or whatever. These ideas, these concepts that we have uh, that just get passed around and passed around. Mm -hmm. uh, so take it and say the opposite. Stand for something that's mm -hmm. the opposite. So never grocery shop when you're hungry becomes always grocery shop when you're hungry. Right. Um, never wear white after Labor Day becomes only wear white after Labor Day. All you need is love <laughs> for the Beatles becomes all you need is hate, right? Like just yeah. flip it, flip it around. Stand for something different. Um, change it. Say something unexpected. Another way to be a disruptor is to name your audience and make them feel like they're part of a global movement. So we just saw mm -hmm. this with with um, Kimra. Mm -hmm. So it's as much about her as it is your who you are because you follow Kimra. Like you become part of a global thing, a global mm -hmm. movement. You become a freedom hacker, right? And that's one of the reasons my Facebook group Brave Entrepreneurs was so freaking successful is because people wanted to be brave. They wanted to be part of that movement. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that just really resonated with them. The, the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, the March for Our Lives, all of that. Those are all movements. Um, and, and we're seeing 
all of this participation and just like numbers that we've never seen before. The March for Your Lives, uh, I don't know if you guys had it where you are, but here in the States, we had it this past weekend. And some of the biggest numbers you've ever seen in a protest, right? Like making people feel like they're a part of something that's bigger than them. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's, first of all, that's an amazing thing you can do as a marketer is really help mm-hmm. people create a legacy and an identity for themselves and give them a voice when they feel like they don't have one. Um, but it's also a way for you to, a way for you to be noticed, a way for you to do something that's different and special and unique. You can also say the things that people are thinking, but they would never say out loud in public. So I wish I could quit my job and work for myself. I had that thought every day when I was in corporate, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be ungrateful Mm -hmm. um, or potentially lose my job. Stand for something that's in opposition of what your audience is being told and shown every day. So Dove's campaign for beauty, right? In total opposition to Victoria's Secret. And then be unexpected, be weird, let your freak flag fly. Just put yourself out there. Yeah. Christine, anything to add? Yeah, no, and it's, um, and I don't think you're saying, you know, you have to be weird or like make stuff up that's not no. you, but whatever like quirk or passion that you have that maybe isn't something that's directly related to your business. Like I love traveling. We've been on like eight trips in the last year and a half. You know, we're take, we're making the most of being in Vietnam to travel all around Asia and So I'm sharing more of that in my messaging. So that's like, you know, it's not like a weird freaky thing, I guess, but it's it's something having to do with me as a person, right? And people are, when they, when they buy from you, even more so than buying the product, they're buying from you. Mm -hmm. They want to know you're a good person, like that you're, you're real, that you're interesting. And if you're all, you know, like in your box, corporate-y and boring and bland, they would rather, you know, they're going to go resonate probably with one of your competitors who has a similar product and you say yes to. I mean, there's, can I tell you how many times in my life where just the pure uh, feeling like I resonated or had a connection with somebody made the decision for me. I mean, I made a decision last year to enroll in a program and I was super excited about this program and Akashic Records that this one woman was providing. I actually had sessions with her. I really liked her. But when the program came up, there was something that just, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And so I didn't enroll in it. And lo and behold, another mentor that I've, has been in my world for a few years and who I know personally and who I really respect and love, I didn't even know she was doing Akashic Records stuff. And then up she pops like three weeks later with this announcement of she's going to be training people in the Akashic Records and at three times the cost of the other program that I said no to. And it was an instant yes for me. Yeah. So I was willing to pay more than three times as much for a, in a much bigger commitment from, from my time perspective um, and more difficult in some ways, but because of that person, because I knew, I know that she gets me, she understands me and I have a personal connection with her. Yeah. Yeah. That cult of personality, right? I mean, yeah. really letting, letting your personality be a part of your brand. I, I just think you have to, I just don't think there's a way around it. You know, I, I do believe that it used to be enough for you to talk about like numbers and stats and 5k in five days and all of that stuff. And that was really yeah. attractive. Um, but I just, I don't see that being the way that you grab people's attention. So much of it now is personality. So much of it is story and emotion and, and story and emotion. That's who we are as people. That's, that's the best way to show off our personality, right? To tell a story and to tell, right. um, to tell the truth, to share who we are and where we've been and what we're doing in the world and how we're at, how we're adding, um, to this great, amazing planet we live on. And right. If which is also that will be left behind. Yeah, which is also why I think the whole reality TV thing took off. Why Facebook Live and Periscope and you know all this live streaming is so popular for people to watch and consume, and is now whoops, sorry about that, becoming you know a go-to thing that you know if you're marketing yourself, you really need to be paying attention to because people know when you're on live stream, unless you're like one of the best actors and right. And then you should be in Hollywood. You can't fake live TV. 
it was really hard to carry through a whole, like a whole like you know big brother show or something or even a facebook live stream and be somebody you're not so people know when they're watching you they're getting the real you you know my sister was actually for those i mean most people don't know this my sister was actually on the road rules europe uh, show <laughs> all those years ago and i said you know you have all these cameras around don't you like aren't you always kind of like on guard you know about what you share and what you say and she said it's weird even though there's like a bazillion cameras you're mic'd all that stuff you forget and that's how these these things come out on the reality shows that you're like oh my god i can't believe she shared that or she said that because you forget and you're being you yeah yeah and so they're like being you needs to come across in your copy also and it's the most natural thing that you could be, right? Everything right. else is harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's my final tip for you guys. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, you know, if y'all are catching this on the replay or you, you know, go back and you watch this uh, training again to get all of the juicy details out of it, and I totally suggest that you should, you have a comment or question, put it into the comment box and I will definitely... Um, get them over to Lauren. She can respond to them. She can reply to them. And I know, Lauren, you have something special to share with us also for that you put together for my people. And I got to come up with a name for my people now. I'm like, dang, yeah, Freedom Hackers is already gone. So I got to <laughs> Brave Ones, that's already gone. Okay. Else. Yeah. Um, so for your people, specifically for your people, I have a little... Um, funnel in a day training for you guys. So it's 10 videos, it's 10 trainings and examples and outlines of exactly how to write your opt-in, which is your freebie, the page that people like actually go and to enter their email address, how you get them to do that. Right. right. Um, and then all of the emails that you send after that to get them to hop in a discovery call with you or to buy um, from you. It's your nurture sequence. So it's mapped out from the very first like eyeball on your thing all the way to the final email that you send, exactly what to say, how to say it, in what order, examples, just like we did today um, on, on this training that you can use as amazing swipe files. I have permission from all of these people that you can actually like use them and study them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then outlines, you can just go ahead and fill in with your own information. So um, it's usually $97 and you guys are going to get it for half off. That price when you use the coupon code Christine 50 so capital C yeah and I'll put that in the description for sure and I know this is a pain point for people I know this is something people struggle with and even if you've you know been through one of my trainings which we you know covered some of this stuff or some somebody else's you know get another perspective it could be you know if you have automations and funnels set up in your business you need more than one series of emails. And sometimes it can be really challenging to come up with, you're like, well, I put all my good stuff into this one series of emails. How do I come up with something else? So this is like a super shortcut that you can use that Lauren is giving you for like no brainer investment so that you can create super effective copy that is going to engage um, with people. They're going, you know, it's going to keep them on your list and even more so move them towards becoming a paying client. And uh, I really highly suggest, I have, like she said, I have all of her trainings. I highly suggest that you go this way right now. So um, yeah, one thing I was seeing as a copywriter is that people were taking like months and years to put together their funnel and they just, they just- uh, Yeah, or for, for like oh, never, right? Cause like it feels never. so overwhelming to do. You're like, oh, I'll get to it someday, you know? And yeah. that someday never comes. Exactly. So this is designed to do suffers, right? Exactly. And then you don't get your clients and you always have to be going out and getting your leads and your people aren't getting nurtured. And it's like, that's stupid. Why, why would you start a business to work all the time to like go out and have to recreate the wheel all the time? So this is designed to do in five hours, get you up with a funnel in five hours, give you everything you need to rock and roll with it. And just like, get it up, <laughs> like actually get it up so you can start seeing the results from your funnel and start seeing your leads come in, um, qualified leads who like want to work with you and know what you do and know what you stand right. for and who you are. Um, and yeah. so it gets you out of that like paralysis space. Yeah. 
And that's also a way that you can keep away those tire kickers, right? Or the people who are going to ask for a refund or, you know, not be the ideal client and be like a thorn in your side when you're working with them is by using your copy right up front to, you know, entice the people who are the right fit and really kind of, you know, make it really clear, like, this is not for you if yes. you're not fitting my ideal client profile. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. I will put everything up in the description of the video. The replay so you know is going to be up through Friday night. That's when Lauren's special offer ends. So I'll put all the details in that of that in the description. But you definitely want to watch the replay while it's up. Take notes. There's so much stuff here. And if you just implement, I mean, even if you just implement one, one of these tips, even just one to start with, or you said, okay, I'm going to do one a week, yeah. then it will make a huge difference in how effective your copy is and really your bottom line as far as sales goes. So thank, I can't thank you enough, Lauren. Thank you so much for sharing your brilliance with my audience. I'm super excited and I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. So that's it, everybody. Um, I'll be updating the description. Pop your questions in the comments for Lauren. I'll get those over to her to make sure she can answer them for you. And I will see you on the next live stream. Many and blessings. shine brightly. Shine brightly, right? <laughs> brightly y'all. Yes. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.